Hello everyone, welcome to Clean Jobs in HVAC. Anybody got a towel? Hello everyone, today on Green Clean HVAC Jobs we're looking at centrifugal chillers. Today we're going to look at a trained centrifugal low pressure chiller. If you take a look at the diagram over here, you'll see that we have an evaporator, a condenser, compressor, economizer. All of these work together to provide us chilled water. So the refrigerant is going to come from the evaporator, through the inlet guide vanes, through the wheels. In this case, it's a CVHE, so we have three wheels. CVHFs only have two. This is the compressor. Comes up into the condenser is a high pressure, high temperature uh, gas. Gets cooled down back into a liquid. Water comes through, cools it down. The water goes out to a tower. The refrigerant comes down to an economizer. From the economizer, I have a couple of um, areas where it comes off and goes into the different stages of the compressor to cause this to be a lower pressure to give me some subcooling. Leaves the first stage economizer, goes to the second stage. A CVHF only has two stage economizer. Comes down as a liquid, goes into the evaporator. That liquid covers the tubes. We have a um, Right in here where it goes in, we have a re restrictor or orifice that allows it to drop from a relatively high pressure, maximum 15, to a vacuum, 18 to 20 plus inches of vacuum, depending on the refrigerant and the application. This cold refrigerant now, or cold refrigerant now, picks up the heat from the water, which is going out to my loads, my air handlers, etc. The vaporized refrigerant comes off, back to the compressor, and we start all over again. As you can see here, this is my compressor. A really cool thing, this is a touch screen. We can see and go straight into the motor. We can look at the evaporator. We can look at the condenser. We can also come over here, look at the motor. The purge. Now, on these units, the purge, which is over here, is used to remove any air or non contaminant or contaminants that get into the system. The evaporator is generally in a pressure less than atmospheric, so it's in a vacuum, especially while it's running. Because of this, air will get sucked in and we need some way to remove it, so we use the purge. It's a refrigeration unit that takes the air and refrigerant samples off the condenser, normally, condenses the refrigerant, puts it back into the evaporator, and relieves the uh, non-condensables either into a, a regenerative container so we can wring it out some more, or in some or vents it out to atmosphere because it is not a refrigerant, it is uh, non-condensables does a great job of removing those non-condensables. So one way we look for leaks on a low pressure machine is looking at what our purge rate is. How many times an hour or a day I'm actually purging. So, low pressure chiller. We have the evaporator where we remove heat from the water, send it out to the building and do our cooling with that. The heat that is removed from the water is sent to the condenser. We have water coming from a cooling tower normally that will come through here and remove the heat from that hot gas, take it out to the uh, cooling tower and release it to the atmosphere. Now, one of the things you're going to find on your EPA test is they're going to ask you about the high pressure relief on a low pressure machine. That's what we have right here. They come, can either be ruptured discs, or in this case, a ruptured guard. So if the water temperature gets too high, the refrigerant temperature will go up, the pressure will go up in the machine, we need to relieve the pressure rather than 
burst tubes and things like that. So we will have what we call a ruptured disc that will be right close to the lowest pressure area in the system or a rupture guard. Now this lowest pressure area is in the suction of the compressor. So you might ask why would it have a high pressure? Well the intent is that let's say the machine is off. It's reached a pressure above or reached a pressure above 15 pounds uh, and that's the pressure cutout for this machine on the high side. Well, if the pressure keeps rising and gets to approximately 15 pounds on the low side, it will burst that rupture disc and allow the pressure to relieve without damaging tubes or the machine. So, in a nutshell, that is a low pressure chiller. We will be talking more about that a little bit later, but low pressure chillers are among the most efficient pieces of HVAC equipment currently used to produce cooling for large complexes. So this is Tim and we'll see you again on HVAC clean and green jobs. Hello everyone, this is Tim. Just hanging around trying to figure out what to do with the next video. So come see us next time here on clean jobs and HVAC. We'll be hanging around waiting for you.